The topic is guns, and after the Parkland massacre in Florida, there's a lot of opinions and a lot of tension. We have been in the field polling, finding out what Americans are thinking and how it might motivate them to vote in November. There's a lot to talk about. Let's get started. And hi, everybody. This is Paul Hub. I'm J.D. Dapper, Director of Innovation here at the Marist Poll. And I'm Lee Marigoff, Director of the Marist College Institute for Public Opinion. And I'm Barbara Carvalho, Director of the Marist Poll. It has been uh, quite a week in America, uh, another uh, school shooting, a mass school shooting. We've had so many. This one seems to be different in some ways, at least. Uh, the students out in front doing I- incredible things that have you know, gotten a lot of accolades, but also have gotten some attention from people who believe they are, are uh, perhaps being used to further agendas and all that kind of stuff. We uh, went right out into the field and have been talking to people and asking Americans what their thinking is about guns, gun control, gun restrictions, the Second Amendment, and how it will influence them or could influence them in the 2018 elections that are shaping up. Um, where yeah, do we start? I, I, I was just going to say just right off uh, right off the top that you know these things affect everybody. And we're sensitive to that and, and particularly to the families we've been seeing. And, you know, and, and I do think we have serious, cogent positions and feelings being put forward. And then there's always a lot of noise about these things. So, yeah, we're going to take a few minutes, I guess, in, in this podcast and try to talk about some of the polls. And the goal here is to maybe enlighten and bring the, you know, the, the, the voice of public opinion into the discussion because that's what we can do best. And so I don't think, uh, you know, hopefully we were not going to contribute in any way to that noise that's going on because uh, there are some important things that people are discussing and we'd like to sort of jump in on that too. Well, we here at the Maris Poll, uh, we're doing polling this this week on, on the topic, um, as well as other organizations. And I think one of the things that we did find, which uh, most polling organizations have found, is that there is a, a consensus um, on the topic of gun policy that something needs to be done. Now, certainly, there's a very significant and intense debate about what that is. But in our poll, for instance, we found that uh, 71% of Americans uh, think that uh, we should have uh, stricter gun laws. Um, Very few, only a handful, 5%, uh, think that gun laws should be less stringent. And about a quarter of Americans think uh, that the gun laws we have right now are sufficient um, and don't really need to be changed in any way. I think what's very interesting about this this particular data, uh, which is a little bit different than what we have been seeing um, in the past, um, we asked this question just last um, October, and at that point, again, we still had a consensus, almost two-thirds of Americans, 64% felt that gun laws should be strengthened. Um, And even a couple of months after um, the Sandy Hook um, massacre in Newtown, Connecticut. Um, we saw that 60% of Americans had that sense that we needed to do something. I think what's different here is that we see such a consensus, seven in 10 um, Americans, and also the fact that um, when we look at people who think this is an important issue, an important voting issue, in the past, that was generally people who felt very strongly about the Second Amendment. I think we, what we might want to talk a little bit now is that that has changed. Um, in fact, when we look at people who think that the um, that this issue is now a voting issue, um, three quarters of them, more than three quarters of them, want our gun laws to be strengthened. One of the things that, that struck me about this uh, more strict, less strict, and and the the influence on the election was that. Even 51% of Donald Trump's supporters, yeah. self-identified yeah, as these are people, people who voted, who say they voted yeah, for him. And these are not necessarily people who approve of the job he's doing. Right. We're going back and asking people, did, did you vote for did him? They vote for and him? they so, say they voted yeah. for him, 51%. Yeah. So that's striking, too, mm-hmm. to me, is that more than half of Donald Trump supporters feel that way. And gun owners, 58% of gun owners believe that the sale of guns, the laws regarding the sale of guns, and that's the specific wording of the question, should be more strict. That's striking to me that gun owners (laughs) believe that in six out of ten. That really struck me. 
and indicates, I think, that this is an election issue, if the election were being held today, would be paramount. But is there any indication from what we've seen here that the intensity of interest in this as a voting issue in 2018 is going to stick around to voting day? Well, you know, and, and that is always the, the, the position that gets advanced, uh, you know, when, when you have polling that is so close to, uh, you know, the immediacy of the event itself, you know, what kind of uh, long-range impact does it have? What I think interesting, and certainly in the last year with the, the Donald Trump uh, administration and the presidency and, and what's been going on in Washington, it's been, you know, a half a dozen major issues a day. Uh, this one seems to have cleared out everything, everything else for already a fairly, by current standards, a fairly lengthy time period. And then also there's plans, uh, as people know, to do various marches and the like uh, over the next couple months. Um, and I think that for the young people who are the you know, the, the uh, driving force behind this. For them, it's, it's uh, you know, an interesting change uh, in terms of who is involved. We have a new thing in our politics, and it's high school kids. Yeah, and, the, and they can't and, vote yet, but yeah. they will be by 2018. Some of them will. By 2020, nearly yeah. all of them will. Yeah. One thing that stood out, Barbara, in this, the, the way we asked the question, let's set that out forth first. Um, when it comes to your vote for Congress this November, is a candidate's position on gun policy a major factor, a minor factor, or not a factor at all in deciding your vote. And some of these breakdowns, when we look at the groups, really, yeah. really stood oh, out to me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, and I think that's where we're really seeing um, a significant change. So we, when we look at people who say this is going to be a major factor in deciding their vote for the midterms, and again, you, you mentioned that you know we gave people three choices, um, and what we tend to look at to see if it's actually going to be a voting issue is those people who say that this is a major factor, because um, those tend to be the one with the greatest intensity, and intensity mobilizes. So when we look at that, um, what we see, interestingly, um, is that 74% of Democrats uh, feel that right now that is going to be a voting issue for them. And including, um, we see 54%, a majority of independents also saying that that's a big factor. Ironically, only 49%, less than half of Republicans, feel that way. And when we think about this as a, as a voting issue, it is also seems to be tapping in to the same groups of people that have been mobilized up until this point, particularly among women with the Me Too movement. This seems to be another reinforcing issue. I think one of the more surprising numbers that we saw in this was the huge gender gap. And there's always been you know, somewhat of a gender gap on the issue of gun policy, um, women being more um, likely to think that gun laws should be strengthened, less likely um, to own guns or to be gun advocates. Um, but this time through, although we see that um, a slim majority of men will see that it's a voting issue, 66% of women overall say that this is going to be a major factor in deciding their vote. And of course, that could go either way, right? If it could be, yeah, a, it mean, could be a Second Amendment issue. It's important or to note that we asked a neutral. The question's neutral: is the, is the candidate's position on gun policy, not on gun control, gun right. policy, which is both, you know, letting, te letting and teachers have semi-automatics or, or banning semi-automatics mm -hmm. entirely? Yeah, yeah and mm -hmm. I think we're going to talk a little bit about the direction of some of this sentiment. Um, I did want to go back uh, one second. Uh, uh, you mentioned, Barb, the uh, the Me Too movement. And, and that's one that also, uh, to your point earlier, Jay, um, that has not dissipated by any means uh, from, uh, oh, gosh, uh, you know. Uh, right, that's carried right, on the entire Right yeah. after President Trump's inauguration the next day. Yeah, the uh, women's march. And, and then all the recent news uh, that, that sure. obviously has. Uh, that's a good, it's I, a good point. And, yeah. and, to, and then I also think that, that when we asked in this poll about whether Americans think that the high school students at Parkland are going to have a major impact or not, um, a third feel that they're going to have a major impact, and 74% think, Americans think, that they'll have either a major or a minor impact. So um, they are thinking about long-lasting quality here of, of the role they're placing. Um, and I think, you know, it's fair to say that the, um, the, art, the, the ability of 
these young people to, in the face of this evil, uh, were able to both mourn and also be politically and communication-wise they, they incredible. Did, they did what no politician has been able to do, which is to shut down the it's too soon yeah. call that comes after every one of these. Yeah. There's a, It's too soon. We will have time to discuss policy. Let us send our hopes and prayers yeah. and thoughts and prayers to the victims. These were the victims' friends and families and relatives who said, no, 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 it's time. And that may be the biggest change of all. Yeah, and so, so I think that that, you know, does get a dialogue moving and, and all those things. And we did, looking then you know, forward-wise uh, to the November elections, we were asking, as we always do, about the so-called congressional generic question uh, which, about— Which is, are you going to vote for a Democrat or a Republican, not your specific representative, but you know, yeah, which generally. party do you— And, and we, we found, and this has been going up and down a little bit, and this one's sort of in the middle, uh, 46% saying they're going to vote for Democrats and 39% saying they're going to vote for a Republican, which, for those of you who don't have a calculator in front of you, is what we call a plus seven. And, uh, and, and I, I don't think, even need it. I'm bad at math. I can even you're, do that. You're, 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 I saw yeah. you counting your fingers on that one. I, I got you on that. Um, but I think it's important to, to point out that 55% of voters who say this is a major factor in deciding their vote say they're going to vote Democratic. Only 32% say they're going to vote Republican, which is a gap of 23 points. Is that an in? Do you think that's an intensity gap? Yeah, I think that really speaks to this flip. You know, we, Barb was talking about a few moments ago in, in the Second Amendment, and Democrats have really shied away from the gun control issue in elections dating back, I think, to 2000. Uh, well, it's when, been a much more positive issue for Republicans. And a mobilizing and, and a issue. A mobilizing issue, but an, also a, a concerning issue for Democrats, uh, linking it not only to being weak on gun policy, but also linking that to being weak on crime and other law and order issues. Yes, I think that, that's exactly right. So in this, so I remember in the, uh, you know, some Democrats have have run talking about gun control and have not been successful and there are you know democrats who have you know n you know been successful going on the other side and i think there's some red state democrats who are kind of treading very lightly now because of, of a concern that maybe in their state this may not be as driving a change uh, or a flip as, as we're seeing in the in these national numbers but there's no doubt that the intensity is there and unlike any other time I think it's fair to say that right now this would benefit the Democrats not the Republicans in a you know so-called congressional oh, well, yeah go ahead well I well I want to just uh, pick up on that because one of the things when we look back at 2016 and um, how we were looking at that particular uh, race um, what we saw was the Clinton campaign focusing not just on urban areas and the traditional democratic um, constituencies, but what they were trying to do was they were trying to galvanize and mobilize uh, particularly suburban women uh, or when other people in the suburbs um, to the Democratic cause and specifically to her to her campaign, um, and so that was a question mark. And when she when she lost, uh, there was this sense that she was not successful in turning that around, and that perhaps that was a group that was still in the Republican corner. I think what's very interesting with the Me Too movement and also what we're seeing in the data um, and the results of this particular survey is that's exactly where the change is occurring. It's occurring in the suburbs, and very specifically, it's occurring among women who live in the suburbs, who live in smaller cities, um, and are, are having a really a different perspective uh, on this uh, than their, their male ca counterparts. And this seems to be a group that does move back and forth and very often uh, points out or points us in the direction of who's ultimately going to be successful, Democrats or Republicans. Soccer moms. Yeah, it's one time they're called soccer moms. I mean, we're seeing this group sort of having a different view of different contexts. Well, for instance, so here's they were, I mean, they were the only, really the only group, except for Democrats, who a pl plurality of them felt that the Parkland students were going to have a major impact mm -hmm. on this debate. Interesting. 
Yeah. Because they're moms and they've got, well, that's probably making it too simplistic, but well, there's but probably nobody closer to this, even in our era of lots of stay at home dads and stuff, than suburban moms, because these schools have, by and large, been suburban schools that have yeah. faced yeah, it. has been a lot of that. And so, I think when we look at, we look at gender, when we look being, at age. A gun violence support course being an urban problem as well, but these sure. mass shootings we've been seeing. The mass shootings yeah. in the schools have been suburban, yeah. But I think also what we have been seeing um, in terms of age, I know you say, well, their parents are not parents. I think parents do, um, you know, certainly are much more in tune with this particular issue. We've seen that in our in our data, both men and women. But I think what is interesting also is regardless of being parents, because that is actually the age group. So we're looking at people between, you know, 30 and 45, uh, people in their you know late 40s and early 50s having a much greater sense that this is an important issue that's going to be a voting issue. So I, I want to throw a fly in the ointment of our theory here that Democrats may benefit from this because of suburban women. There is uh, uh, there's a fair number of people who are saying this could be Trump's Nixon to China moment, that no one in, in Republican modern Republican history, actually seems to have the capacity to have Republican the core Republican base abandon their longtime values like that, whether it's on the deficit, whether whatever, on mm -hmm. all these different things. And there are indications um, from some of the uh, things that Trump has done in the in the not immediate aftermath of Parkland, but certainly in this week, mm -hmm. that he has been talking to people. The, and listening to people mm -hmm. about some substantive changes. They may not all line up with what everybody wants, but is there the possibility that he actually steps forward here? His his approval rating remains where it's been in this poll. 38. Um, his supporters, though, as we pointed out early on, 51% of his supporters, self-identified, support stricter gun sales laws. Yep. Is there a chance for him to do what Nixon did in China, you know, what, it, what you know, that's the famous line. Is there I a way think to do he's that? Always, I think he's always had that opportunity to go counter to what the expectation is and also counter to what the party or the base would um, assume that he would do. Um, up until this point, he really hasn't taken advantage of that, whether that has to do with, um, you know, immigration, um, the economy, tax policy, health care. Um, he hasn't taken that opportunity. Certainly, this is another opportunity for both him and the Republican Party to own this issue. I mean, this is an issue yeah. that yeah, is out there. It's not without... Uh, you know the NRA being uh, a, a key participant in this, and and the you know all the money that's been spent. And I think right now some of the discussions and some of the ideas that are being advanced, for example, putting arming teachers and putting them in classrooms, is not exactly yeah, going to be considered a pivot. The, the from suburban present. moms may not sign up. Yeah. Well, and it's also difficult. It's also difficult, and there's a very big difference between uh, thinking about running in November and thinking about running in the primary season when you really sure. do need to speak to your base. Let me just point out a couple of things who gun owners are because okay. we you know we talk a lot about them yeah. but who are they? Um, well we find that 40% of them uh, identify as Republicans. 35% as independents and only 23% as Democrat. Um, they're overwhelmingly, two-thirds of them are men. Only a third of uh, gun owners um, are women. Interestingly, they are... Uh there's really no age difference. When we look at age, we look at Americans as a whole, and we look at gun owners, they're pretty much um, very, very similar. Not surprisingly, though, um, they don't live in the Northeast. Um, they are much more likely, 48% of them, uh, to live in the South. And also, one other thing is when we were we were talking about this, you know, suburban phenomenon, um, there's certainly a much smaller proportion of um, gun owners in, you know, suburban and small cities than we'll say in small towns or rural areas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's it's interesting because we think about gun older, gun owners as maybe a mass of a single type, and this breakdown makes it interesting to see one of the things that I think you might think is, oh, well, they're, they're the people who are lower income, live in rural areas, and they're white. No. And well, not some, all of of that's that, yeah. some of it's some true. Some of it's true. But 65% of gun owners make $50,000 a year or more. 
I mean, that's another one that jumps out. I think I think what it's what it points out is that this conversation has been so difficult for so long in America, partly because of the NRA funding things. You know, it, 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 part of that, part of it because the people who have strong feelings about gun laws, stricter gun laws, um, are very very disparate, and they don't have a unifying thing. Uh, even though their opposition to you know sure. free guns is, is a unifying thing, it's not the same as the Second Amendment having a gun being part yeah. of a gun culture. Yeah. There's not really an anti-gun or a Jim Brady, if you want to kind of culture. Yeah. There is a gun culture, and it well, is. I think there's a very, high school anti-gun culture. Yeah, right now there's right. By, well, that's what I was getting people. at. Yeah. So that's what I was getting at. Does is this the moment? We've talked about a several sure. ways this might be pivotal, but culturally. Is this the moment where a culture actually builds around gun uh, laws, restrictive gun laws, whatever you want to call it? Is this the moment that that actually happens? I think a lot of our politics, you know, we've talked about wave elections, and, and lately they've been more like tsunami elections. Uh, you know, you know uh, when President Obama in the midterm elections, uh, what was the word he used? I got clobbered, or there was a word he used to, to describe his, uh, his uh, you know, d- you know horrible defeat and that horrible for him. Well, you could pretty much use any word. Yeah, yeah, he was, yeah. And and I think that right now, uh, you know, there is that sense that, you know, the reactions to our politics, the send them a message to the existing politics, despite President Trump's, you know, draining the swamp and, you know, going to, you know, shake up Washington, there seems to be both from the women in the Me Too, and now with these high school kids, a sense that, you know, this may be a send-the-message kind of electorate. We see it in the generic questions, and we see it in a lot of these special elections that have been going up that have been uh, been doing that. I think also I did want to make one other quick point on this, and, and that is in the poll we did ask about the NRA and support for NRA candidates, and the numbers were 51% of registered voters said they would definitely or probably vote against a candidate who was funded by the NRA, 37% percent said they would definitely or probably vote for. That's a 14-point difference. It increases, however, to 62 percent saying they would oppose uh, a, a, a support gun policy uh, uh, in opposition to the NRA uh, if they think it's going to be a major factor in their vote. So when we look at the major factor, folks, um, that's a, so this should be watched. How do candidates deal with the NRA? who is obviously not shy in uh, taking positions uh, both at their conferences and at the CPAC uh, gathering this week. And I think if there is a moment for um, Republicans uh, to take a stand and define gun policy, it may be on semi-automatic weapons. I know we tried banning assault weapons um, in the past. Um, well, there was an assault sure. weapons ban. Yes, yeah. absolutely, but um, that tended to have a lot of loopholes um, and lasted um, and received was rescinded after 10 years but this may be another this may be another moment um, because when we look at the results of the survey for that as well um, you do see um, you know a significant support not just um, for um, a prohibition but also for that being a voting issue yeah, and I, w- I want to make one final point. I think I already made my final point. Let me make one more final point, and that is from a pollster standpoint, there's going to be a lot of things, poll results floating around. Uh, you know, people should take them each as an individual uh, response, not necessarily as you know what polls will show down the road. But I do think there's one question. I'm curious as to your reactions to this. I I'm, I'm having some problems. There's some people asking questions which we almost did then decided not to uh, about whether you think the problem is more a mental health issue or more a gun control issue. And I know other people have asked that. We decided not to. I'm having problems with that question because I think there's such an overlap in that that I'm having trouble separating it out, I think, between mental health and gun control because there's sort of a both in there. And I'm not. I know different political forces are trying to make different arguments and define the yeah, and define, define the, the issue. Argument. But I, but I, I don't think that's a clear one in terms of uh, moving people in different ways. It's confusing to me what the results would mean. Yeah, I mean, to, to me they sound like they 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 both are in play in many situations, uh, but in many mass shootings they're actually not in play. Although you can also say, well, anybody who would do that has got to be have some mental issues. Yes, but you know, how do you 
qualify that. We're going to uh, continue to pull on these issues. One of the things that we are always committed to doing is tracking things over time because that's where you can really see yes, what's going on. So we're going to revisit this. We're going to stay on this and uh, and check back in. So for now, though, that's going to do it for this edition of Poll Hub. Uh, this is a production of the Marist Poll at Marist College here in Poughkeepsie, New York. And Mary Griffith has worked very hard this week throughout this poll and on this podcast to get us into position. She is our executive producer here on Poll Hub. Yeah, and I also serve on the, uh, the Roper Center board. Uh, they archive at, at Cornell University all kinds of important poll results over time, and that's a great resource for people uh, who are interested in sort of, you know, combing through poll results and trend data. I know we use it a we lot. We like to do that. Yeah, we do. We're, we're frequent visitors to, to that uh, site. Um, and then also we might add that we're also eager to have you folks uh, send us questions to pollhub at maris.edu. And certainly check us out. Uh, Poll Hub can be found on social media at, at Maris Poll on Twitter, on Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, pretty much anywhere. And you can listen to us anywhere you listen to podcasts. So, but don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe.